I'm just making sure everything is um, up and running and we are live. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where are we? Descriptions. <laughs> let's make sure we laugh, eh? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Is there sound? <laughs> so random, hey? Okay. I like to have it on my phone so that I can see what's potting. <laughs> to make sure that everything is, 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 is going according to plan. Just want to put up the chat so that I can see if anyone sees. How's it? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a super duper ice cold freezing cold <laughs> it seems like every day every time i go live it is super freezing <laughs> super cold and i look like an absolute teapot because i always want to make tea which i'm going to quickly make myself a cup of tea but also we're gonna um we need to dissolve some um coffee in some boiling water so Here's the thing. We were doing a series on fudge, right? This is the last. <laughs> I promise. I'm not going to bombard you with fudge again <laughs> after today. Um, <clears throat> this is the last of my fudge. So um, of our fudge series on you know the different flavors and how we're gonna go about. I um I think I've pretty much I think I've mastered it just a little, I hope. <laughs> um so i have a few taste testers and um yeah i think um i sent the fudge out between my husband and then um i sent i packaged up all the fudges i had made and i sent it off to four different people so just to try and get everybody's different opinions and to see what they thought of all the different fudges so the very, very first fudge that I made with condensed milk, I did away with that recipe completely. So no one tasted that one. We knew it was too soft. It, for me, it tasted too sugary and yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. So then we did the traditional fudge, which, um, which is just a traditional, um, like vanilla fudge and, um, that didn't have condensed milk in it and based on that recipe i did two other variants um but that recipe that original recipe i did twice oh uh, create a channel to join the chat i don't know uh, what just give me one second i can't apparently live chat not that i'm going to live chat on here let me just swap accounts. That's very random. Let's go back to here. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure so that I, I am able to. There we go. That's, that's better. Okay. So, between the first batch I made of the traditional fudge without condensed milk and the second one, the difference between that was is that the first batch was made with the Macavada sugar and um, I didn't have double thick cream. The second batch, the same one, but I did it the second time, um, I cooked it for longer and I used brown sugar instead of the, the Muscovada sugar. And um, the difference between the two were that the, the first batch had a, a very much of a strong flavor because the Muscovada sugar is, has a very unique flavor to it. And it's quite strong and it comes through like a very, almost like caramel, Kind of flavor to it um so i found i found it to be quite strong 
Also, that that first batch was I baked it to. I mean, I boiled it to the amount of time that was I was told to. So, my husband said it was too soft. But what I did with that is that I packaged it up and I let it stand, and everyone got to taste it only a week later when they collected all the other fudge. It's when I packaged it all up with all the other flavors. That one had been standing for a week. So originally, when I, I, I did it, and and at after what three four hours, um, it was quite soft. So it wasn't. Well, it it was firm, but it wasn't. It wasn't very very. It wasn't firm enough for for my husband's liking. Um, so I actually wanted to see what would happen if it just stood for a little bit longer to see if it would set a little bit more. The second um, one that I did of that same recipe where I did it with brown, plain good old brown sugar and not muscovado sugar, everyone said to me that it it wasn't as it didn't have the flavor really there because it was the brown sugar and not the muscovado sugar but the second one was definitely firmer but that one I cooked for longer so going forward I will do it the the um the first way except just cook it for long you know boil it for longer so get it to a higher boiling point as opposed to the the boiling point that it's with all these recipes I will cook it at it I will boil it at a higher boiling point just so that we have so instead of um, 241 degrees Fahrenheit, I will take it up to about 246, 247, 248, round about there. Just that little bit more so that it then has, a, um, that is a little bit firmer. Also what we found is that the first batch a week later definitely firmed up and everybody absolutely loved that one that it was. So it needed that extra time a week later <laughs> a whole week later um that it was a lot firmer and everyone said it was just you know much a, a much nicer um flavor and everything so we're going to go with that one so bear in mind all of these i am probably going to now put up and we're going to package it pretty uh, quite nicely and probably more than likely put it up onto my website as something that you can buy on a, you know readily and um so that you can um probably order as gifts for Christmas and for whoever else you know you, you might know of somebody who is a total fudge nut and you'd like to give them some fudge so that's that one then the other one that we did was the caramel chocolate fudge um, the basis of that was the, the, the vanilla fudge but um, it had caramel mixed into it now the problem with that one is that it landed up making the fudge a bit soft um, a little too soft but everybody absolutely loved the flavor and everything so that one I um, yeah that one I'll need to little work a little bit more because it needs to have that if, you're gonna, if I'm gonna pass it off as, as caramel chocolate fudge I kind of need to um, yeah get it um, not so soft so I'll probably land up having to yeah I'm not 100% sure. I'll do something with that one. So, but they definitely love the chocolate ganache and the fudge together. So that is a definite. Might just land up not having the caramel and we'll just do a chocolate ganache um, fudge kind of um, thing. Today we're going to do a coffee walnut fudge. So yeah, I'll probably look at that one again. And do it in the same process this one is because what this one does is that it it melts it melts chocolate and the coffee into the fudge while we are boiling it, which I think is better because you're going to get the flavor of the coffee and the chocolate, but it's then going to be boiled up to be firmer. And I think that's probably your better bet. I think possibly I might not not on on, on camera is I might land up possibly testing out doing like peanut butter fudge but I will see I'll see what I, if, if, if I have some time to do that 
I don't want to also give too much of a variety because, um, well, I don't know. Some people say like my, my, um, the one person said they just absolutely love the, 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 um, the traditional one. They're not into different flavors and etc. but other people absolutely loved it. So I think it very much of, of a, um, personal preference. Whether you want your fudge harder or softer, what flavor you want, you know, that kind of thing. I do think that the coffee walnut is going to be really, really awesome. So, with that, let me quickly make my cup of tea. And I need um, some boiling water to, um, we need to melt, um, melt. We need to um, do some coffee, turn the coffee into liquid. I'm just going to do that. Um, so, well, we all know how to make tea. I'm a, a, apparently a bit of a teapot. <laughs> so make yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and, <laughs> sit back and relax and watch what, what we end up doing. Hopefully this one is going to turn. Hugely, hugely better. Okay. So um, in the meantime, I'm just going to do this in the meantime. So this time around, we need the double cream. So I did buy double cream, but I'm actually going to mix it because I didn't actually find any difference between using double cream or normal cream and the besides the price. Let's be honest, the price is ridiculous um, for double cream. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just mix it so that it's not so i've got one tub of double cream double cream and one um of normal cream and i'm going to mix the two together so that it's still thicker than this normal cream um so yeah this is still done with with um with cream and um we need to, oh, two tablespoons. Wow. Okay. So it's two tablespoons of, um, of coffee. I'm just going to use, um, my husband's Jacob's coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker and he is a, I would say what you call a coffee snob. <laughs> he might not <laughs> like me saying that. But yeah, he only he only drinks good coffee. So I, I I trust that this is good coffee. So so I'm just going to dissolve my coffee because we're going to need it. So in some, it's actually quite thick because it's it's um two tablespoons of coffee dissolved into three tablespoons of boiling water. So it's quite a thick. And quite thick and quite strong. Um, okay, so so it's going to be the usual base of double cream, milk, butter, caster sugar, and mascarpone and um, sugar, and then we are adding chocolate and coffee and walnuts. So I just want to get some things prepped a bit. And one of the things is if we need to chop up. Oh, oh, we've made that too strong. We need to chop up our chocolates. I've changed the angle of my camera in the hopes that it's going to be better. Okay. Um, we need, oh, not quite good. We need, we need um, 75 grams of broken chocolate. I just want to put it in the dish because this is more than 75 grams. We'll just slice that up. This is milk chocolate that I've got on hand that I use. We're just going to break it up because this is probably just going to get dissolved in the sugar because it's going to be super hot. So you don't actually uh, um, 
yeah, you won't you won't need to melt it or anything like that. And you're not going to have uh, yeah, it's not going to come out um, as chunks because yeah, it's going to get melted. Seventy five, seventy five grams. I can be very meticulous. Okay. And then um, I need seventy five grams of. 25 walnut halves. I don't know if I've got 25 walnut halves. Okay. So I'm going to just take out all the big pieces because I'm going to need those for or on top. I thought I'd said 25 grams. <laughs> 25. So that's fine we'll just you know that's a very specific number 25 but I'm just going to take all the big pieces out because you know, we've got some nice big pieces for the top I am not counting good God <laughs> um, I do however need I need 75 grams 75 grams of walnuts. I'm just going to measure that out a bit. To put the walnuts in. I think we're there. Yeah. So that's that's enough. Yeah. So that's my walnut halves that I'm going to put on top to decorate. I might just shave this nicely just to you know on top to decorate as well although yeah it will yeah it will have cooled down enough so I'm just going to chop these up it says to chop it up chopped I want to chop it some more because I feel like some of these pieces are too big um you know I'd rather have um some smaller pieces inside there but you know like you so you still want to be able to you know have a good bite and crunch to it you know if there's walnuts in there you kind of want to like you know make you know taste them there's nothing worse than than them saying that there's nuts in there and they are so far from few between that you don't even know that they're there okay it's just there's some pieces that are super big here so i just want to chop them up a little bit smaller okay Okay, at least these are like you know they're not big and they I'm not crushing them until they're like you know nothing which is obviously not really what we want to do we want to have it decent like biting into a hazelnut <laughs> a hazelnut chocolate to only get a mouthful of just chocolate and no hazelnut you don't want that so if I, you know, just by making it slightly smaller, I think then we'll get more of an even distribution. What I, was, I think I was the word I was looking for. Okay, so we're gonna pop that to the side. Right. Uh, what else do we need? Okay, so that's done. The the chocolate we don't need to melt. So we're just gonna pop that in there like that. Make sure this is melted. So we are going to take our three liter pot. 
I'm going to leave that little thing to a really big pot. We're going to put the double cream in. Um, only 400 mils. So, yeah, basically I'm going to use this double cream. You can see the big difference between how thick this is. It's like, it's like butter. It's so thick. But you know, they say that this is 250 mils, and when I measure it out, it's not going to be 250 mils. More than likely. So I need 400. So, hmm. I obviously don't have a 200 mil cup, in, you know, to make sure of that. So, okay, so this one is turning out to be 250. So I need, um, what's it? For 400, 250. That's an extra. Hundred and two fifty. Hundred and fifty. Two fifty plus fifty is three hundred. Hundred and fifty. <laughs> Why? My brain with maths today is not apparently working. So I'm just going to then, it's, you know, it's a it's basically a cup and a half of cream. So we'll measure out a half cup of the, so it will be more, you know, the double cream and not. Also, I'm not sure why they say you, you, you put double cream in and then you still need to then go and put um, milk in. So you're going to land up making it in any way. So like, I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I'm like, Would you just go with, if you don't have, because the milk is going to thin out your double cream, right? Anyway. So you buy normal cream and instead of doing milk and cream, just go 400 mils of cream plus the extra 150, so 550 mils of cream, and don't use the milk because then it's thinned out and it's still cream, and it's, yeah. For me, that's more logical. So I'm actually going to, I'm not going to use milk, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put my leftover cream in, which to me makes more sense. So that would be, yeah. That, that's right. So I'm not going to put milk in. It does say to put 150 ml of milk, but I'm just going to put the cream in instead. Still going to work out the thing. Well, it should. <laughs> we will see if it doesn't. Technically, it should. That's yeah. Um, I'm just going to whisk it up a bit because yeah, this is kind of lumpy. Quite thick with cream. So yeah, I mean, like if it's double thick cream plus milk, the milk is gonna make your double thick cream no longer double double thick cream, right? So yeah, might as well just get normal cream and eliminate the milk. Just make sure you've got enough cream and the the quantities of the milk and cream together. Okay, so we're going to put the cream, milk, and then the butter. We need 150 grams of butter. I just wanted to, yeah, but this cream is you know, sticking to the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to put that on the side. We need 150 grams of um, butter. Too much. There we go. 
150 grams of butter and which we're going to pop in there. And we need to put the sugars in. I am not too sure what golden caster sugar is. It's either brown sugar or caster sugar. And caster sugar for me is white. So I'm not too sure what golden caster sugar is. So I'm just going to use normal caster sugar. That's what I have. Um, I'm going to use the caster sugar because obviously the caster sugar will... Um, dissolve better. That's all. So we need 400 grams of caster sugar. Oh, that's a chocolate, not a fact. Oh, my husband and him. Sneaking. Oh, that's too much. Four hundred and then two hundred grams of the muscovade. So this has got—I mean, this 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 particular sugar has got quite a unique flavor. To it. Okay. 200 grams of that. Pop that all into here. And uh, right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to boil this like we did previously. Okay. And I'm just going to mix this up. I find that you to kind of just get your sugar's wet in your cream and stuff so that you know it doesn't burn in any way so I just kind of like to wet it before I actually start with the boiling of it okay then I'm going to use my wooden spoon my silicone wooden spoon and I will be using my sugar thermometer Okay, what I'm actually going to do just to kind of speed up the process a bit is that I'm going to bring it to boil on a higher plate, on a, on a hotter plate. You know, um, if you've got gas, if you've got a gas stove, um, you know, the smaller the plate, well, I suppose it's even on the on a normal stove, the small plate is less heat and the bigger ones are, are, are a lot hotter. So I'm going to bring this to boil. I'm going to melt the butter and everything and get it to the boil. On the higher heat just to get it there and then i'm going to move it onto the lower heat to get it co to continue to boil because i don't want to boil it too too fast because i could then miss the boiling point that i'm looking for and then i could totally damage this altogether so i'm just going to swap cameras and then i'm going to move over Okay, so I'm going to put put it on my number one, which is a hot plate compared to that one, just so I can get that boiling. And I'm going to get it to about, I think, 248. And then we'll move back this way. Um, I think it's going to come out quite a dark, rich color between the muscovada and the chocolate and the coffee. It's going to be, I think, quite dark. Oh! While this is doing this, this 
not going to come to boil very fast. So while this is doing this, I'm just going to quickly, because I've totally forgotten about it, line my pan. You're not going to ask what it is. <laughs> so yeah, don't forget that you need to actually line a pan. But well, better to line it than um, than not, because it's easier then to take it out. And remember that the trick also, uh, that was also the other trick, which I sh really mustn't forget. The one of the biggest tricks was once it was boiling, you had to let leave it alone. So while I melt the butter, we keep stirring it and stuff like that. But um, that was what I did with the one that was a lot firmer. Was that while it was boiling, you don't. That gives you that smooth, smooth texture, and um, that melt in your mouth texture of your fudge um, is to not stir your fudge while you're trying to get it to that boiling point so we're going to do that as well we, we're not i'm not going to stir it with, um once it gets to that boiling point and leave, leaving it to boil here um i won't stir it i'll leave it until we get to the boiling point because apparently while you're stir if the more you stir it the more crystals form and you actually don't want those crystals so I um, also must get my, um, my bowl of water with my brush so that I can brush off any crystal that form on a plank. So we're going to make sure that there's no crystals on the side. Um, When it starts to get to that boiling point that we need, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just line this pan once I've got it on here. Oh, I forgot to put my. So you can see on the side, form crystals. Now you don't really want those crystals. So. Look that dark color. And it's going to get even darker with the coffee and the chocolate. I, I, I feel, I feel like this is probably going to be the best one yet because it's no longer the first time me making fudge. I've, I've done a few different things. I've learned a few things and yeah, we worked out what you should and shouldn't do. Even if the recipe tells you otherwise, sometimes, you know, the recipe tells, uh, definitely says to, to stir it continuously. We have worked out that that is not a thing that you should do. So while I'm just trying to get this to the boil, I'm stirring it while I'm trying to melt the sugars, melt the butter. But from here, once it's come to a boil now, so I'm going to see. So now it's really starting to boil, which is what I want. I just needed to get it to that boiling point. And then I'm going to move it across to this pan. So it's a really hot now. So now we're going to we're going to leave it to boil. I'm not going to stir it. I'm going to I'm going to wash down the sides so that it doesn't form these crystals that we don't want. The more crystals you have, the more um, um, more likely you're going to have like these chunks of sugar and crystals inside your fudge, which means that you're not going to have this smooth melt in your mouth. 
fudge. Now, probably with having small nuts or any kind of nuts inside the fudge, you're not going to maybe taste that. But if you were doing, not, no, no, if you were just doing a coffee fudge, a coffee chocolate fudge, which is absolutely doable without the walnuts, then you, you would, would not, you would not need, want to taste. You want that smooth melt in your mouth, taste in your mouth. So I'm just going to finish leaving. So now all the crystals have been washed off here. I don't, because if you leave it, they're going to harden on here on the side. And then when you come to actually needing to whip this up when it's done, um, you're going to land up pushing those crystals in here, which is what you don't want. That's why I'm going to wash it off. So I'm just going to check the temperature, so I know where my starting point is. Because it, what will happen is that it, it will jump up. It will jump up to a certain point and then it will just sit there. And then it will just change quickly, the, 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 the temperature. So. You just have to see so we're already at say that this process where I've got it to boil here and melted everything and then moved it onto the lower heat is much better because it's going to not take as long. Sweetie, come here. One day I think I will invest in um, a thermometer that um, flips on the side. <laughs> Something I do not have at this point. Hey, Miss Sweetie, do you want to move? My puppy dog is wanting to... Oh, what has my child done with my scissors? I don't know if I did that. I will let you open it. So we're just going to pop, I'm just going to line my, my, my dish. You'll see the last time, the, the last time if you watched, um, uh, it took us forever to get to this boiling point. So this, this is going to do it, it this way definitely help. Okay, I just want to check it. My puppy dog just wants to get out and I can't let her out right now. Okay, let's check. But you don't want to leave this because it will turn fast. <laughs> so I just want to make sure where we're at with this. Definitely slowed down, it's at 2.14, so we've still got a while to go.
You can't go that way. joys of having animals <laughs> and want to go out when you need to when you're busy live streaming so we sorted them so i'm sure my 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 my, my taste testers are going to be Static about getting one more batch of chocolate of, of a fudge sorry, to try out so that they can because they, they, they I mean they really tested out three different fudges so this will be the fourth see now it's just sitting at 215 And it will sit here for a while before jumping. In the meantime, I'm just um, I'm just trying to pick that. <laughs> I kind of like it um, if it's a little bit um, overlapped, because then it's easier to pop the the, the the. I kind of need to get an actual square pan, pan I think, because the pan has rounded edges, uh, rounded corners. I mean, so yeah, can be. A little problematic. Yeah. Okay. But what I am going to do, I'm just going to line it a little bit because I don't want even the sides um, sticking. And I'll just line it a little bit. I always just use butter, um, especially if I don't have spray and cook. If I had spray and cook, I would just use some spray and cook. Just make sure that the sides are lined. I mean, you know, with, with butter so that it doesn't stick. I just put a little bit at the bottom so that this will stick to it. <laughs> like that. You know, it to be nice and smooth. Okay, that would be perfect for what we need to do. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands and then we'll check the water. I mean, temperature. Let's check. So you can see by not touching and not stirring, there is no crystallization happening on the sides. I'm also going to um, I'm not going to cut this, so you won't see the end result of this today. Um, probably only tomorrow. <laughs> or maybe Friday. <laughs> so why I say that is because I'm actually not going to allow anyone to touch this or to taste it or anything um, until at least tomorrow. So I'm going to leave it basically to set for at least 24 hours. Because I know they say two to three hours, but I actually think the longer it sits to set before cutting and then, you know, taking it up um, definitely is better. Unless, of course, you can't wait and you're just going to, you know, eat it. But I mean, that's just all dependent on what you think it's for you or for someone else. So now I see that the temperature is only climbing very slowly. So 
but jumped quite a lot to two seven to two fifteen, and now it's just like sitting at uh, at this point. Right. So, um, just so might as well talk about some other stuff in the meantime. Um, what what's happening this week is um, Friday. I so I got this um, amazing new little toy called an airbrush. So exciting! So much fun. You can do so much with it. I'm still learning it, and and you know, I um, the Harry Potter cake that I did on Friday, I airbrushed just about everything on there and it was so much fun not the toppers but just the the books the cake the everything it was actually so much fun so on friday i am going to just probably not be on for very long probably for an hour an hour and a half with just playing around with the airbrush and just doing some basic stuff with it um and showing you how what you can do you know how, how, to, how to start getting you know how to work with it how to put it together all that kind of stuff how you must clean it all that kind of thing um and um and you know how you can do different things with it but like very basic i'm not going to show you anything complicated or anything like that um because i'm still learning a few things to try and you know get more complicated and exciting different things um so yeah we're just going to do some basic stuff just so that we can see how it works and what it's like and all the rest of it and just yeah basic uh basic use of it um the most amazing thing that i did find out is that it covers chocolate beautifully so i, I struggle to to color chocolate white chocolate and get it to a color that we that i wanted um without getting having blotches and all sorts of weird things so airbrushing chocolate is quite amazing so that worked beautifully i made golden snitches and i airbrushed everything and it was beautiful so i'm pretty stoked about that so that's what we're going to be doing on friday doing some some airbrushing please stick around for next month next month uh, well i mean my lives my be depending on what's going on in the kitchen as usual but um you'll see my social media is going to be all very much around uh women's month and that i'm going to be doing different things um uh yeah i'm, I'm involved in some um non-profit organization where where we um i don't want to let the cat out the bag just yet um where, where I've been doing tutorials and more tech stuff um, rather than baking and stuff because I am uh, originally from, uh, I am a, a, a graphic designer and um, so yeah, we're going to be doing, there's a whole lot of stuff happening in August that we're trying to do in honor of Women's Month. So yeah, just keep an eye on my social media um, to see what's happening. Uh, not necessarily live stuff there will be one or two things that are live um there are we're doing a lot of live stuff on twitch so throughout the month of august so um i don't have a personal channel the, uh, my twitch channel on, on on my channel on twitch is swiggity sweetie which is my zumba so you can look for swiggity sweetie on twitch and look for mrs Fuster. um we are going to be doing some fun stuff in the month of august um, yeah, we won't be live streaming it to YouTube, but it'll be on Twitch. Let's check this temperature.
we're at 220, we've still got a whole 20 degrees or so to go. Again, I would rather slow boil this than, um, than do it fast on a hot plate and then it turns fast, you know, it turns to, to the softball or actually to hardball stage far too quickly and then we actually end up damaging the sugar and our fudge gets ruined. While we wait for that to boil some more, <laughs> it can be quite a thing, obviously. So, yeah, we'll definitely be there much longer, you know. If, um, just want to make sure. So, what we're going to do from here, once that is, we're going to let it drop, the, it needs to drop. So, once we get the temperature up, we're going to then drop, get it sit and cool. Very, it's not going to take very long. For it to drop down to about 250 degrees. I'm working with Fahrenheit um, and um, though that's not the norm for in South Africa but my, my thermometer has got the Fahrenheit and it's, it's very specific here with the Fahrenheit. Um, and then we're going to stir in the chocolate and add the coffee and chopped walnuts and then we're going to beat it until the mixture thickens and loses its glossiness. So that's just the norm that we do anyway with a fudge, where we beat it, we bring it down to cool, and then we beat it until it, it gets starts to thicken and loses its glossiness. So that, yeah, we'll do. My, what, what did they say? You may find that oil is released from the chocolate. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, the chocolate that comes, in, you know, the, the oil that's inside chocolate will come out. But if you mix it, it will it'll recombine, apparently. Pour the chocolate fudge into here, into this thing. And then we'll just decorate on top. So by then, this will be quite cool, the fudge, once we beat it. So that's why I thought, okay, we'll, we'll put the... Uh, nuts on but I might do some chocolate shavings and put that on top as well as a little bit of a decoration. is it would take a while to get the temperature up and you can sit here for a while <laughs> and then you have to work really quickly with it it's got, can't be left alone that's the problem is that you can't just leave it you know put it on and walk away it's just not something that you can do So you can see how it, once it hits a, 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 a certain point, yeah, it just then just sits there. It's at 224 now. Still taking much longer than I expected it to. So, 
Anybody chatting? No one chatting to me today. Why don't you want to chat to me, guys? You must say hi if you're in. <coughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it, I, is it me or is it just no one in? <laughs> the li the live on YouTube is definitely um, a lot different to being live on Twitch. People tend not to really chat, which is weird for me because I end up talking too much and about all sorts of things. So about things that are not relevant <laughs> to anything. <laughs> okay, well, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to wrap a bit. Drain as well. Pop everything in. I'm gonna need my board again. Just going to do that. Uh. Um, hmm. This is definitely looking a lot quicker and than the previous ones. It's quite strange because the these recipes are based off that original first one, but the quantities are different depending on what is being added to it. I thought that the, it would, the base would still be the same, but it's not. So this is looking super thick. This is definitely looking completely different to to the previous fashions that I've done. No, this is. I'm actually starting to worry about my thermometer are not working properly because it looks super thick. And I feel like it possibly is at that softball stage. Because it really, really is thick. Hmm. I'm just going to test out on, 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 on a bit of. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna no. Oh no, it's not at all. Oh, oh okay. So I, I'm not sure why it's looking so thick compared to the other ones, but it's not even at softball stage when you put it in water. I can't even pick it up, so it's definitely not at softball stage. It's just very strange that it's so thick. Maybe because I'm not moving it. I 
also feel that um, because we're going to add liquid to it, so we're going to be adding coffee, even though it's minimal um, liquid and chocolate, which will turn to liquid, and then we have oil. Um, I feel like it needs to be at a higher softball stage or hardball stage as opposed to lower because adding liquid which I found out by putting the caramel in um, made the, 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 the fudge a lot softer by putting the caramel in so like if I think if I made that caramel chocolate again I'd probably make the fudge a lot harder to accommodate for the caramel because the caramel did definitely Although I, I actually, the amount of caramel that I put in there that they said to put in, in the end, I, I really couldn't taste, taste it. So I don't know if it was even worth it. Worth putting the caramel in, I feel like you need to make the caramel and then do what we're going to do now. Add it and beat it. Boil it up, beat it, so that it's part of the actual thing, as opposed to, to something that gets added afterwards. No, definitely not softball stage. Weird. Weird. It just seems like it should be at softball stage now, the way it's so thick. But it's not. Um, I'd love it if you made um, you know made a comment or two in the comment section um, if there's anything that uh, you think I should try out um, you know if there's a specific recipe I'd love it if you sent me a recipe that you'd like me to try out that would be awesome um, I can do so yeah just comment in the comment section and say well or, you know, post to my Facebook page saying, please try out this recipe on your life. Um, yeah, wouldn't mind doing anything like that. Would be fantastic. I have to know what people would want to see me do live. So, yeah, we go. It's starting to move a little faster. We've got to, what's this? Okay, here we go. See, now it's, it's sat for a while, and now it's starting to move. Now we're at 132.
Thomas there to jump in quite fast now. Up to thir uh, 239. If we want to get to, to I'm going to go for 248. 242, this is where they want us to be at, but I'm going to go to 248 because I want it a little bit further. So right now it's at the soft wall stage that they said it should be at, but like I said, we want, I want a little bit firmer, not so soft. And when I'm saying soft, it's holding shape, but it's like really not, it's super soft. Okay, we're at 248. Okay, so we're at 248. I don't know why the camera's just moving my camera a bit so that you can see better. Right. So we need to now it's gonna drop. It needs to drop to 230. So I'm just checking the temperature that has dropped to about 2.30. And it dropped quite quickly. So you can see it's quite glossy. So we're going to land up beating it until it's um, not, until it starts getting like, it loses this glossiness and has like a matte look to it. I mean, this is, this is still incredibly hot, so you, you need to be careful when working with this kind of thing. Even when you're making um, marshmallows, you do the same thing, um, you know, boiling it up like this. Um, hot sugar boiling like this is, you will get an incredible burn from it. Okay, so we're down to the 230 where we want to be. And then, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add our coffee in. You know, I'm hoping that this is not going to affect its, um, its texture because that's, that's basically what happened with the, the caramel chocolate one. It affected the, 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 te the texture. Well, not the texture, the, you know, whether it was firm or not. So, so we've added all of that in, and now we're just going to look how nice and dark, delicious that looks. <laughs> I'm not a coffee drinker, but I do love the smell of coffee, and I do love, um, like, coffee-flavoured things so like coffee flavored chocolates and that I, I do like that so I am pretty sure I'm going to love this because it's it's you know with the cup of coffee even though I'm not a coffee drinker I don't like coffee in general so we just beat this up until it gets nice and thick
yeah so by chopping the nuts i think we're going to have a more even distribution of lots of nuts as opposed to um you know only one or two here and there and you'll be lucky if you get a nut i think to be honest i think when when um if i make the the the, the caramel the caramel um chocolate one again this is how i'm going to do the process i'll have made the caramel which um I, the, when i did make it um the caramel that i made was quite a lot so um i wouldn't need to uh, make it again because i um, apparently you able to deep freeze it so that's what i've done so when i make it again i'm just going to do exactly this where I add the caramel to the fudge at this stage and beat it in as opposed to just plopping bits and you know like a little bit on top that's actually what I did and it and it tended to affect the the the, the firmness of the of the fudge so So you can see it's still got a quite a bit of a glossy look to it so it's not quite ready my, my right arm gets tired because i had surgery done on that two years ago my right arm's not strong as it should be it used to be This kind of stuff, if you need a workout, you should do this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I feel like this is still quite glossy. I haven't turned yet. But I also feel like maybe I, you won't really see much of a change as opposed to on, on like traditional and um, because it's darker and because of chocolate. So I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, for me, I feel like this is still quite glossy. It hasn't changed. So I don't know if that's, like, I feel like that's obviously because of um, the coffee and the chocolate that we've added to it. Not so much the nuts. 
<clears throat> Happens to be getting thicker. I just hope it doesn't turn into more of a toffee. <laughs> that would be funny. But see, that's, I think, where the thing is, is that obviously if you don't beat this enough, it could turn to toffee rather than fudge because you need to beat it enough for it to turn. See, I don't even hear the sugary. So... <laughs> The way I bake, I bake with hearing, smelling, and all the rest of it. So normally what happens in the traditional fudge when you're beating it like this, when you scrape it on the sides like this, you almost hear like this, um, with the sugar, um, and I'm not even hearing that. <laughs> but we shall see. We will see what the end result is. Eventually. <laughs> I'm just going to swap to my spatula. You can see it's getting, obviously, it's getting quite thick. But now I'm worried about it. <laughs> like a toffee texture. It shouldn't. I don't think. Yeah. The cream, I think, will um, stop it from getting that toffee texture. The cream and milk. Definitely a lot thicker. Now I feel like I'm part of the, you know, doing this, the American Fudge Factory that used to be around all those years ago, where they used to sit on these marble, um, they used to have these marble uh, tabletops, where they sit with like this kind of thing. And then they would sit there for hours, you know, pushing and, and doing exactly what I'm doing right now until it came right, until it hardened. And then you would they'd make these massive bricks and you would only buy a slice. <laughs> they, their fudge was incredible. <clears throat> Don't know if they're still around or where they're at. Okay. I feel like it still hasn't lost its sheen though. Or am I wrong? I don't know if you can see it on camera. joys of doing these things first time and not knowing what the result will be. Okay. There's definite there's a definite oil from the the um the chocolate because it's 
coming away from the, the pan like this, which is from the pot, which uh, the fudges didn't do. Okay, I'm going to pop it in here. Let me do it this way so that you can see. I don't know if I can. This to me looks like it's possibly not going to be, I don't know. Maybe I, I've boiled it for too long. Maybe going to 248 is just that little too long. Um, I don't know. We shall see what the result is tomorrow. Because <laughs> I'm not going to, to touch this until then. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to... Do anything i'm just going to leave it and see what happens and see what happens okay so we're gonna put um our walnuts on here again i think you know i'd rather just put lots of little pieces and have them on here on top for, for decoration rather than these big ginormous pieces. Make them bigger than what's inside. Gotcha. I said wal uh, walnuts and pecans are quite soft, so they, it's quite easy for you to just uh, break them. Yeah, I think if you don't have, if you can't get your hands on walnuts, because obviously walnuts and pecanuts are kind of expensive, um, one is cheaper than the other, you can definitely use um, pecanuts if you can't get your hands on walnuts. Um, or possibly any nut actually that you, you, you want to use, not so much cashews or anything like that. Um, pecans, um, macadamians, any of those like rich in flavor. I find, um, I think cashews for me is more of a, a savory kind of, you could even use Brazil nuts in here. I would never, I would never put uh, uh, cashews in chocolate. Uh, it's not... For me, a, a cashew is more of a of a savory, a savory kind of nut. So you would use it more in savory dishes, as opposed to in a dessert. I think uh, macadamias, pecanuts, uh, walnuts, all that kind of stuff is more of a a dessert, a dessert kind of nut. Did my husband eat that? <laughs> it snuck past me and he ate it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna put some little shavings.
to put on top here. But I think that will make it quite nice actually. It will add to the flavor of it. But yeah, not putting it in directly, just you know. So that gives it some. Some good looking fudge. Just cut a little bit more. I think this is the, the you know definitely the way that you would if you needed to make if you wanted to make chocolate fudge, you know, just a straight good old chocolate fudge, you would just um you know, put in a good amount of chocolate. So, yeah, I'm going to say that's me. I just want to actually check here. Yeah. I always find it interesting to taste it this way. So the texture on this is not fudgy at all, which is, is worrying. It's more toffee. So it could be possibly because I boiled it a little bit long, but I could, I also feel like maybe it could be the mix of, of, of the coffee and the chocolate, even though they do say it's fudge, but I'm not getting that fudge texture in my mouth. It's super smooth though. So much can you taste the coffee. Wow. <laughs> can definitely taste the coffee in that. Um, yeah, you can see to me that it's, it's still looking pretty glossy and I don't know if, if, if beating it longer would have really helped. Um, we can only see, you know, I'm going to leave it for 24 hours before I cut it up and taste it and see it. Honestly, my, 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 my gut feel is that it's probably quite possibly be, could could be because of the coffee and in which case because of that extra liquid so then it's lost it's um soft ball or hard ball stage or i don't know but, uh, there could be a different way to be to be better to um rather add the flavor while you're boiling it i feel like possibly that is probably the best way to do it is actually have put the coffee in right at the beginning and boiled it with it now and it probably they say not probably would say not to because i suppose you could boil the flavor away but i don't think that that would be the case because i mean like the muscovado sugar it definitely keeps that flavor so yeah, I'm not sure. We shall see. We will see what this does, what happens here with this one. And um, yeah, it just it's it's seeming more toffee. It's looking more toffee as well. Looking more like toffee effort than 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 fudge. It could be because I went instead of so the last time I went to two forty six. Fahrenheit and I've taken this one to 248 and 248 might be too just two degrees too much and I think that, you know that little bit does actually make a massive difference so yeah we'll see I'll post it on Facebook once I've chopped it up and I'll take a nice picture so that you can see what it looks like put it on my Facebook and my Instagram and yeah you can see what 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 what, what I've done with it
anyway guys thank you so much for joining me and for watching um and i'll catch you on friday at half past nine um for some airbrushing um yeah hope you have a super duper wednesday and i will chat to you soon bye